we want to go to Kana Whitworth, who is also on the scene, and she's been there for hours. Kana, how are you doing? Hey, Kimberly, thanks. Yeah, we've been here all night long uh, into the wee hours of the morning. I have to tell you, we've been talking with victims, and they have, there's some of them are still out here. They've been up all night long telling their absolutely horrifying stories about what happened. And I'm sure you, you've mentioned it was college night there. This bar was packed with hundreds of students there to celebrate 21st birthdays. Uh, it's a place that some of them go two or three times a week. It was actually described to me as their safe place. Uh, and then I have to tell you, you know, it's an 18 and up club. And so what we're seeing that's been really scary is parents uh, mm -hmm. arriving to the scene, absolutely frantic. They're looking for their loved ones. And it's been terrifying. Uh, currently, authorities are working to identify the victims right now. So many of them, though, that made it out, made it out because of heroics performed by people that were inside the bar, just patrons there. Um, I spoke with a young man who said he saw someone throw a bar stool through a window. So he did the same thing, threw a bar stool th through a window, and that's how they got some 30 people out of there to safety. I, I think we actually can listen to what he had to say. That there is a, a bunch of us that were just looking for cover and we were we were standing right next to a pool table and so we got everyone behind the pool table and down and then there was probably six or seven of us guys just dogpiling over the girls that were beneath protecting us. them yeah because they're it's my family that's what that's what you do with your family um and we waited hid as like as low and as quiet and turned off telling people to turn off their cell phones so that we wouldn't draw attention to ourselves until the first round of shots ended. And then I knew that we had a gap because he was either going to reload, change weapons, whatever he was doing, we had to act now if we wanted these people to live. So I, I was getting up from where I was lying on top of people and looked over and saw someone had thrown a bar stool through one of the windows because the, the closest exit was far down that way or closer towards him and we were going to go Just towards him and so we needed we needed to get out of there and this was the best way to do it so i grabbed a bar stool we went through the through the window and then we people whoever was in the front basically was pushing the glass down and jumping out and help helping the guys and girls out um, and we just stood there basically forcing people as many people as we could out as, as fast as we could until um, we cleared everyone out and then we jumped out ourselves um, then it was just trying to collect everyone and push them down out of sight and as far away as possible. So yeah. isn't that incredible to hear? And what he told me after that, Kimberly, was that once they got all those people to safety, they actually started heading back because people were kind of scattered. They didn't know what to do. Some people were calling their parents, and he just sort of tried to funnel everybody out to safety and, and just get them out of there. Uh, it, it's a really compelling story when you hear these people talk about what happened to them. And then we also heard from uh, a, a young man and his father, and the father feeling like he almost had regrets because he only did things to keep his son safe. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the kind of things that people are thinking about right now. I actually, I think we have that sound as well. Kimberly, it's incredibly emotional if we can listen to that. Yes. Right next to the entrance, we were getting ready to leave. We had put some pool and uh, some smoke came in. He, uh, I guess he had rolled some smoke in and he fired the first shot and I knew it was live. I knew it was real. And my son thought it was a joke. So I pulled him down and got some behind cover and looked up and he was moving to the right. He shot the front. Dorman, bouncer, well, you know, just a young man, and, and he, he shot the, the cashier, just a young girl, and then he started moving to the right, he wasn't looking at us, and he went into the office where all the cash and stuff is. He didn't say anything at all. He just started shooting. And I should have stayed till he changed his clip. But I was worried about my boy. I but I should have stayed. I apologize to anybody who got her or passed. I'm sorry. Wow. That's hard That's to watch. It's so hard to hear, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, and just you have to imagine, Kimberly, what it's like for these people making these decisions in the heat of their in the heat of the moment, and their life really depends on it. Uh, the sheriff actually just got choked up here a few minutes ago because he said they had six or seven off-duty officers actually in that club when the shooting happened, and that parents have come up to him, and he he actually started crying when he said this. That parents have come up to him and said, "Your officers shielded my kids. They wow. saved their life." Wow. It's incredible. I, I spoke with another young woman who said a bartender saved her life. He knew the layout of the place, and so he pulled her up like a ladder into the attic, and that's where they hid until this entire thing was over. So it's been a traumatic evening for everybody involved, and, and as a lot of people were leaving, it was a pretty incredible moment. There were uh, sheriff's deputies, uh, fire authorities, and then victims, and then just people coming out here to support them. Victims that were actually had bandages on their legs. They gathered in a prayer circle, and they said after that, you know, this community is going to come back stronger than ever. Kimberly, this is a community that two years ago was voted one of the safest in this country. Yes, which proves it can happen anywhere at any time. And it's it's yeah. becoming so regular now, it's really scary. I know. I so, know. Kana, it's, Kana, it's hard what to hear. And, and when you ask people about that, sorry, yeah? Yeah, I was going to say, what's it, what's it like for you being there? You know, you've covered these sorts of things before. What's the mood for you being there in the middle of this and, and seeing these things happen over and over again, week by week? I think, again, is the operative word there. I mean, really, again, we're out here again. We're doing this again. This has happened in our country again. Uh, people are sickened by that. And it, what's really sad is that so many people I spoke with, this is a country bar. So a lot of them were actually in Las Vegas. Uh, they were at that Jason Aldean concert when that massacre happened. So they have experienced something like this now twice in their lifetime. And that is just twice too much. Absolutely. Kana, thank you so much for your reporting and being there. Of course. And of course, um, you'll, you'll be on the scene uh, much longer as well. So thank you so much for, for joining us.